Hey there, today I want to show you why the kunai is unironically the best weapon in the game. Now that's a bit of an exaggerated blanket statement, but I do truly think this is the strongest weapon in the game for crit builds specifically, so it's extremely strong on classes like Ranger and Recon. I've seen way too many people in the RoboQuest community, whether that be in the Discord, the YouTube comment section, or even people in my Twitch chat write the kunai off as a weak, uninteresting weapon. This cannot be any further from the truth, and to prove it, we did a kunai-only Guardian 4 run. Beautiful! We got a green kunai to start the run with. Let's get going. I am gonna grab extra fire rate right off the bat, just because we love fire rate. And you know, the fact that we have Pierce here is pretty solid. I honestly really like Pierce as a uh, green affix on this thing. Now, we decided to take Ranger because it's the easiest class to hit crits on with Shadow Strike just allowing us to line up and unload our entire hand of kunai into an enemy's crit spot. So for anyone wondering why the kunai is so insanely strong in my opinion, it's because it has a 3.75 crit damage multiplier at base. This can be improved with crit damage affixes and scales incredibly well with crit focus perks and items. Let's see here. Chromatic Surprise, not really a fan of that. Um... I really don't like any of these, so I'm gonna re-roll real quick. Simple Geometry is pretty great, uh, and so is Bestial Ferocity. I'm gonna go with Simple Geometry though, just for ad clear. Uh, that'll save us a lot of time. And then we'll take the Power Cells. Nice. One more item out of the out item pool. Oh, we really like french fries here. Yes, we absolutely take french fries. And we have coffee mug with flower pot. These are all S tier green items in my opinion. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Let me re-roll roll this real quick. I'll take extra crit damage, honestly. Flower Pot, we love Flower Pot. Honestly, that was just such a phenomenal list of items to choose from. Flower Pot is definitely the smarter pick, it's the safer pick. But Salt Shaker, honestly, I'm very confident on my survivability with Ranger. I think Salt Shaker probably would have been the play there, just for uh, more reload speed, more uptime, more, ti more, more time we spend attacking. Perish. Increase stealth cooldown. That's really strong. Obviously, we want to spend as much time in stealth as we can. French fries? Hell yeah. Big French fry fans here. Those are pretty slow canyons, but. Two Knights always have a pretty slow start, in my opinion, unless I get a crazy affix on them. Like Buckshot or Fork. Kazoo. Yes, Kazoo is, is strong. Increase Burner Explosion Damage. So, we need one more Power Cell for that. But we have Secret Book right here. Oh, I'm going to miss out on Kazoo for the Secret Book. I have to. I have to. What an unfortunate blessing in disguise. It's not even in disguise. What if, it's a tough choice. That's what it is. Did I go Oasis again, by the way? Am I losing my mind? I thought I went Ruins. Am I stupid? Was there like an update that changed the location of Oasis to where the ruins are and I'm just having like a mental breakdown or like what, what's happening here? Am I having a stroke? Why do I keep selecting Oasis? I like ruins more. 
Although Oasis is very pretty. I'll give it that. I just want to get that Shadow Strike here pretty soon. Double Secret Book, is it possible? Uh, no. Once you get an item, it's out of the loot pool. Because, you know, you can't, you can't get multiples of items. Increased reload speed, though? That's pretty solid. We'll take the lighter. One thing that I absolutely want to point out is that the kunai turns into an entirely different beast once it reaches blue rarity and above. Now, this is the case for most weapons, but it impacts the kunai's killing capabilities much more than the average weapon. Being able to roll affixes like Buckshot and Fork allow for multiple projectiles to be thrown when attacking, making it much easier to hit crit spots. And on larger crit spots like Judge Ball and Billy Boom's Eyes, you will be able to hit them with multiple projectiles, all doing the amped up crit damage of a kunai. For the purposes of this run, however, we just took whatever kunai we could get our hands on. But generally, I won't grab a kunai, kunai until I see it at a we higher rarity. Taking damage. Ooh. Um... Yeah, we'll honestly take that, just for way better ad clearing, especially if we get Shadow Strike. We'll be able to clear rooms extremely fast if those healing cells give me some cooldown. Because we've already got simple geometry cooking, can you imagine if we pair that with uh, Shadow Strike and Void Hunter? It's going to be beautiful. Shadow Strike, of course. Sonar Spike is also... These are all S tier for what we're going for, but Shadow Strike is just, it's very hard for me to say there's anything in this game for, like, there's anything on Ranger that really matches how strong Shadow Strike is. Being able to stay in your stealth and just land shots with a 25% increase to damage at base and then 75 once you get Void Hunter, it's just, it's just absurdly strong. You're gonna tell me we make that back just by picking we just get our stealth back from healing cells this is gonna be a solid run Oh, let's run back. Wasting time. Wasting time. That's another reason I don't like Oasis. I think the circular layout of the starting room before the first checkpoint really kills the time that you spend in here. Well, I wish I... I really wish I would have gotten ruins, you know? Um, honestly, we don't have too many power cells. And while Toaster is really good if we get Kazoo, we already passed up Kazoo, and I'm just, I have a nasty feeling that I'm not gonna see Kazoo for like the rest of the run. <laughs> That's my superstition intuition kicking in. As with almost all of our runs, we want to kill all enemies that give XP for the sake of gaining more levels. This is the main reason I dislike Oasis. Not only does it offer legendary items instead of an upgrade point like Ruins and Quarry, which is a negative to me, but it could be a positive to some. It has a circular layout, which as I pointed out, really hurts your time if you're trying to either speedrun or secure the S rank. Oh god. Yeah, let's not come let's not talk about that one there, guys. Uh forget you saw that. Alright, 
right, give me Billy Boom. Let's hope for Billy Boom here. Give me in there. Damn it. Diggy Mole again? Come on. Give me some slack here. If you weren't a member of the Cult of the Kunai before, you're probably at least considering it now. This is still a green starting Kunai, mind you. The only affix it has is Pierce. This damage is insane for how underdeveloped our build is to this point. There we go. And then we have Void Hunter right here. Beautiful. That's what we love to see. We love to see that. No witness. Cooldown, no issue. Yeah, that, that cooldown reduction is strong. Very strong. What do we have there? A, a fantastic boom grenade. Yeah, okay. Very funny game. Shock damage by 10. So we'll take Hourglass. We will take Hourglass. Fire rate's going to go down a little bit here. But uh, yeah, damage is going to get a little bit of a buff. A little bit of a buff. Now that we've made it to the fields, we're going to see much higher add density and more of these enemies will have forward facing crit spots, allowing for the kunai to start thriving. This and energy labs will be where you see this weapon transform into something worthy of being called the best weapon in the game. And once again, I want to remind you that this isn't even a good kunai. The only thing separating this from being white rarity is the pierce affix. If you saw any other weapon with this affix, you'd write it off as bad or mediocre at best. Imagine Ready. what this thing can do when you get some good affixes on it. You know what, I'm sure I have some footage of me using a purple or orange rarity kunai floating around on my Twitch page, so after this run, I'll put out some footage of a cracked out kunai at work to end the video and show you guys how busted this thing can really get. Oh, that was uh, a bit unlucky. Just tearing through this place. You going to the secret area of the stage? You talking about Doom Gardens? Because no, I will not be going through Doom Gardens here. With precision builds, I tend to stay away from Doom Gardens. Increase crit damage by 10%, absolutely. We will take that. Now if we can get some, our hands on some fire rate upgrades, that'd be phenomenal. For anyone wondering why Doom Gardens is even considered in the routing here, it's because you can pick up an extra skill point without sacrificing the XP of killing adds in the rest of the stage. Once you're done with Doom Gardens, you'll pop out halfway through Aqua Station, which leads to Energy Labs, just the same as Fields does. Clearing Doom Gardens is one of the best ways to consistently hit level 15 in your runs. Alright, let's roll.
It's just silly, man. I love the kunai so much. Supreme Critical. Oh man, True Shot is also great. Honestly, I think I'm gonna take True Shot over Supreme Crit. I really, really think True Shot is extremely strong. Playing the same rules as default pistol. I mean, I didn't impose a rule set on myself. I mean, class ability is a fair game. I mean, yeah, I can use a javelin, but if I'm being honest with you, the, the kunai does more than the javelin. The kunai does, does, like, way more than the javelin. Back to the true shot versus supreme critical decision. Normally, I would have taken supreme crit, but because we have such a low cooldown on our invisibility, I feel that I would be able to proc true shot very often. But we will increase our javelin damage. Bonk run only? Oh my god, I can't even imagine. I would just perish. Now, the reason we have such low cooldown is because, once again, we have the one legendary item that allows us to get ability energy back whenever we pick up health orbs, and we're doing that quite a bit. But Kunai works especially well with True Shot since it only has a capacity of 6 before a restock. It means that we get a full barrage of buffed Kunai out whenever we pop in Viz. Crit damage by 40? Yeah, we'll take the chili pepper. Sir, I'm gonna just need you to calm down and perish. Now, I still think taking Hourglass was the right call, but we are hurting for some fire rate. We need to start prioritizing that in order to get the kunai feeling good again. The main appeal of this weapon is sending out a flurry of high damage attacks. Right now, it just feels like the pointy knife equivalent of a DMR. here snag that real quick take on enemy increases fire rate by 10 percent um yes we we should take that right <laughs> elemental is no weapons run oh uh i don't think i want to do that because elementalist i actually think his abilities are pretty weak but what makes him strong is the weapons he used like the what, what he can do to the weapons i've only done a few runs with elementalist but and my fastest ever run is actually with elementalist believe it or not but uh it's just because we buffed the shit out of those weapons he, he can really go crazy with the weapons. We just picked up an extra 15% increase to fire rate and are already feeling the difference. This is the moment in the run where everything starts to align and you just know you're going to sweep from that point on. Finally, we can pick up the pace and let the weapon shine. And his abilities aren't really like bad, but they're more for uh, like ad clear, it feels like. Like he can clear rooms very quickly with those things. But he has, 
He has a very hard time bossing with those abilities. At least from what I've experienced. Alright, let's get in there. Give me Judge Ball. Okay. I mean, it's one or the other, right? <laughs> I'll do my best. Cool down by 10%. What don't we have yet? We do have Void Hunter. You know what? Yeah, we'll do stealth cooldown. We'll do stealth cooldown. Hey, what's up, Dark? Ah, oh, don't worry about not seeing the notification. I knew you'd get in here eventually. What's up? Hey, Sours. What you do? What do we got here? It'd be nice if we could get a new kunai. Game doesn't want that to happen though. It really would have been cool to get better kunai, but we certainly don't need it. Haven and District 13 are our stomping grounds, and the best place in my opinion to show off and gauge your build's viability. And as you can see, this one's pretty viable. Favorite weapon? Ooh, okay. I think we gotta take Sonar Spike here, just cause, you know, a 50% increase is kinda wild. But favorite weapon is also S tier. I mean, it increases a lot. Okay, I'm gonna take uh, the Mark, though. 
It's a tough choice. We will be taking favorite weapon the second it's available again, though. If we get it again. Oh my god, I didn't even see you. Like, just look at that. That is silly. That is just downright ridiculous. Somebody against turret, swapping. Uh, I'm gonna actually keep these just in case we get any legendary items or fantastic items, I mean. Down the line. shot maximum by two let's just re-roll uh we do like dexterity increased no we like improved analysis much more though we absolutely take improved analysis there all right we gotta go fast we want to see what these stores are offering Viking helmet. Ooh, it's tough between that uh, and credit card. I'm honestly gonna take Viking helmet though, just in case we do end up taking a Dex later on. If we get an option to take a Dex again, we will take it just because we have Viking helmet. Unless there's like a very obvious like pick other than Dex, but I, I think we're at the point where Dex is one of the only remaining things that we can get that we'd actually be like willing to take. Um, we'll grab the bowl. Alright, District 13 time. Crit chance is S tier. We'll take that. Alright, let's get going.
Oops, let's go this way. Gotta go quick. Crit damage, yes, please. We were just carving straight through District 13. You know, business as usual. The kunai is outperforming itself as a green rarity kunai. Admittedly, I've never taken one this far without it being at least blue rarity and re-rolling an affix that I wanted, so this was new to even me. But the weapon was still proving itself to be an absolute powerhouse in the hands of the ranger. Alright, let's roll. I think we're making pretty good time here. I have pretty bad, like, times for my stuff, so hoping I can pick up the pace here and secure a sub-30, because that would be new for me. I only really care about S-Ring times, though. Obviously, we could be ignoring, like, every enemy we come across and get a much faster time, but I, I really do like S-Rank stuff a lot, just because, you know, the fun of the game comes from me clearing out rooms and fighting bosses, so I don't want to just avoid all that for the sake of the time, you know? Come on, big guy. take the dex. We will be taking that dex with the Viking Helmet buff. Discounted. If you're talking about elementalists, I haven't really been paying attention to your conversation too much, but uh, if you are talking about elementalist, yeah, your uh, comet counts as an explosion, I've noticed. Baby boom procs on that. I think I could be very wrong about this. Take this with a massive grain of salt, but I actually think whenever your shock procs, like whenever electricity damage procs, I think the lightning bolt that like stuns the enemies also counts as an explosion. Because I've seen baby boom proc on that a few times as well, but I don't know if it was just procking on my uh, comet, and I was just only noticing it after the uh, stun got applied. We were flying through the moon, hitting crit after crit, stacking the remains of elites in a pile as we cooked Goliaths with style. The kunai just does not quit. We will absolutely increase our focus. Unfortunately, I do not think we're hitting level 50 in this run, but that's okay. Because we are cruising through these.
Iris wasn't intimidating in the least. With this holy kunai in my hand, nothing could stop me. Like an ant hitching a ride on a soon-to-be ziploc sandwich, her fate was sealed. Let's roll. As per usual, we ignore the generators and focus purely on damage. Once the lasers are charged, we default to our tried and true method of traveling from one side of the room to the other through the use of our grappling hook to maintain our position in the air long enough to either delete the health bar or outlast the laser walls. Quest or er, noise cream play metal here. Oh, god damn it. I think that was my fastest ever clear, too. Kunai is pretty funny. That's why it's my favorite weapon. I absolutely love the Kunai. It's just so nice. It's just so nice. Yeah. New best time for my S rank Guardian 4. Woo! This is my, this is my celebration and my finger guns. All right, cool. Clip that. That's a video right there, boys. And because of how fast that run was, we're going to be able to do, like, a video on YouTube that's not 50 minutes. <laughs> it's probably going to be, like, 40 minutes. And as I said earlier in the video, I want to show you some footage of a higher rarity kunai. So here's a purple kunai at work. Still no buckshot on it, though. I'll let you guys experience that one for yourselves. A small hint is that you can re-roll blue kunai for free until you get it if you already have the weapon card unlocked. And it goes without saying, but this is just my opinion. And just because I think this is the best weapon, doesn't mean everyone else will. Let me know what your favorite weapon is in the comments below. But thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps out the channel, and I really do appreciate the support. You all have a great day. I'm HatterX, signing off. Peace. Go again, Iris. Let's see what you got this time. <laughs>